Greetings citizens of the world, we are Anonymous. Around mid-August 2012 a party took place in a small town in Ohio known as Stubbonville. On this fateful night a life was changed forever as a group of the football players of Big Red High School began taking advantage of an underage girl. The girl was sexually assaulted, raped, and drug unconscious from party to party. The town of Stubbonville has been good at keeping this quiet and their star football team protected. You can hide no longer. You now have the world looking directly at you. Pop roll red roll. Engaged. I knew a rape case happened over the summer. It just seemed like at that point when I was hearing all that stuff, it kind of got swept under the rug. Like nobody would talk about it for a while. And then all of a sudden, some guy comes on and he's not even from the area and he's like, I'm coming for you. She's passed out, it's not okay, it's wrong. As soon as Anonymous posted the video, I was like, I want to help. RollRedRoll.com, the Steubenville High School football website, hacked into last night regarding an alleged rape case in Jefferson County. In the video, the anonymous hacking group threatens to reveal personal information about people involved in the incident. As far as I know, this was the first time anything like this had happened in town. It was um, a situation of where you didn't quite know what was going to happen, not knowing exactly what Anonymous stood for. All you need is a Google search engine to realize we are serious in what we do. Anonymous is nothing more than an idea that can be appropriated for a common cause. I don't think anybody knew really who Anonymous is. I could probably put on a mask and claim I'm Anonymous. There's never been a case like this in Steubenville. It is hard to actually even get anybody in this area to discuss rape. And if they do, it's kind of a little bit, and then it's like, okay, I've had enough. Put this subject away, let's go on to something else. Young people today, and even when I was young, when you have a group of kids and guys and girls and you put alcohol in the, in the mix, uh, things can get out of hand. People saw these pictures and it was horrendous, and they were ugly pictures, and I understand we need to correct that, but we're not bad people. I grew up within a 90-minute radius of Steubenville. I grew up in the tri-state area of Steubenville. It wasn't until Anonymous was called to a local place that I dove in. We just put the information out there, and then it's free for anybody to do whatever they see fit with that information. I was kind of the midpoint between Anonymous and Superman. It's kind of like, I don't know, like when Spider-Man would put his mask on or something, where, you know, Superman changes into his costume. It's like, you're kind of, you're, you're a superhero. And Twitter this, Twitter that, DMs, group conversations, private messages. It was kind of a social media civil war. People went through their Twitter pages, brought up old photos, old statuses, old tweets, getting people from outside sources to hear the story. We can just blow it up. Hey, this girl got raped. What can we do to make this story huge? So they set up a rally for a given date. The first rally was not um, a lot of organization. We want justice! We want justice! We want justice! People really just stood in solidarity, and that's pretty much for a few hours what happened. I just remember seeing like snowball fights. I'm looking at like it's starting, but it needs to move up. It needs basically production. At that point, they didn't release 
the 12 minute No Diodis video of the ad, and I knew that was coming. That's gonna bring thousands of people. And if it looks like this when they get there, it's gonna make the news for a day, and that's gonna be that. Oh my god! I can't on the Oh my god. She is so great, great. Once that Nodi video came out, you know, all hell broke loose at that point. Bro, they raped her. This is the funniest guy. He raped her harder than that cop raped Marcellus Wallace in Paul Fiction. <laughs> National controversy is now growing out of a small town criminal case in Ohio. People laughed and watched, took pictures, posted pictures. They raped her quicker than Mike Tyson raped that one girl. <laughs> the story has now gained national attention and has divided that community. It was sort of surreal watching CNN pull into my backyard. At first I was very angry. It was a really negative thing to live through, and, and honestly, since I've invested my retirement here uh, and then built up this uh, in, this huge negative publicity was not good. Okay, I don't like the anonymous, the way they came into our town and they created havoc. Take it off, bro. You take it off. You take it off. And then Steubenville had a rally of their own. They say our city is divided. We must stand together and united. They say we should be ashamed to wear red and black. I say wear it proudly. You want us to be ashamed of our tradition. You want us to be ashamed of our success. You want us to be ashamed of our children. You want our children to be ashamed of the school that they go to. This case is in the legal system. Let them handle it. A lot of the comments, a lot of the nasty phone calls I got, you know, I'm the chief of Rape City. Um, how do I let this go on? How can I let people get away with it? And as far as I was concerned, we didn't let anybody get away with anything. We had this case solved in the first two weeks. I think we're being held hostage by, you know, maybe 50, 100 people hold, hold this whole town hostage. They're, they're dictating our image. Uh, they don't even know- The outside perception is that you people are nothing but uh, supporters of rape. These church-going people, we're all, we all got labeled like we're, we're, we're monsters here. Everybody who lives here would like to see this story stop being in the media so we can get past it and heal and move on. I've lived here about 40 years. I was sexually assaulted. When I called the sheriff's office, I said, I want to see if I can prosecute. The response that I got from the deputy that I spoke to was, oh, I know him. And the prosecutor has decided that he is not going to take the case. After that happened, I slept with a baseball bat, making sure the doors were locked all the time. I would go places where he normally wouldn't be, and there he would be. I was paranoid and I couldn't depend on anybody else to look after me, so I had to do it myself. If the anonymous group, they hadn't come in and brought national attention to this, I think it would have disappeared like so many others have. This stuff goes on all the time, but it's never been brought to focus in our community. What happened with Jane Doe was something different. I don't get involved in activist, acti I can't say the word, activist, whatever. Yeah, I didn't go to the first rally. And then my sister-in-law informed me of all the tweets and all the pictures and the video. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I went to the second rally. Welcome to Steubenville. If you got something to say, come up. 
I had no intention of going up in there and speaking. But as soon as I got there and I saw these people talking, I just headed right up those steps. I wasn't even thinking, like, you know, Michelle, what are you doing? What are you doing? I just took off on right up those steps, and the girl got done speaking, and I said, I want to talk. I'm 51 years old. It's actually my last day when I was eight years old. Never told anybody. And finally, in my 40s, I decided to get help. Once the testimony stuff started coming out, it just kind of felt like a lightning bolt hit me, because now it's almost turned into like a women's movement in a way. It just changed. The day of the rally, my husband was like, you're absolutely not going. It's too dangerous. That morning, I had decided that if my husband wasn't going to take me over, then I would just walk. <laughs> I just felt like I needed to be there. My name's Alicia. I'm a citizen of Steubenville. I was raped in 2000, reported it to the police. They called me saying that, that they couldn't do anything for me. Some of the survivors that did speak out had not gotten justice in, in any way. And this was their first time speaking about what had happened. My name's Megan. My name's Isabel. My name is Robin. I was raped when I was seven. I also been raped. I never told anybody. And it just made me feel like a brand new person. It's like I was set free for some reason. It just, it felt good. The town kind of came together and everyone was handing out masks and like, if you want to help, this is what you can do. I've went to every rally, I've seen these women speak, and that was a game changer. Well, as far as public shaming, it, it's harsh. It is harsh. But whatever I can do, I'm going to do. And I hope that if someone's thinking about doing something, something wrong, that they're going to think a little bit. What if somebody found out? something bad like that would happen, then yeah, I would like to see people pull together and, and rally and support one another. The steel workers do it. When they're gonna lose their jobs, they go to Washington. The coal miners just bust themselves to Washington. Sometimes you have to let stuff die, but then on the other hand, you don't want people to forget what happened. The talk needs to be about where do we go from here? And not only where do we go, but where does the whole country go? This isn't an isolated case. Survivors are poised and ready to be heard.